Um, so from an agenda perspective, we've, uh, we'll just go through the objectives of the webinar, spend a couple of minutes talking about who KPI Partners is, and then dive right into the business value of, of bookings, billings, and backlog analysis, and spend about 15 minutes on that. Um, then we'll talk about what are the typical challenges that organizations face in implementing such a solution and how Oracle Order Management and Financial Analytics can help provide a quick win in this area. Um, then we will do a demo for 15 minutes on Oracle Order Management and Financial Analytics, specifically around billings, bookings, and, and backlog. Then we will spend a little bit of time on how do we get there, how do we take um, what we want to get to and deliver value to our, our business leaders and uh, what's the methodology, what's the right approach, and also a case study of customers, a customer that's actually achieved this. Followed by, as Jeremiah said, as you post your questions, 15 minutes we've allowed for Q&A at the end of the session. So please, I encourage you to post any questions you have through the chat window. Next slide. So the three objectives of this webinar is one is to describe what is bookings, billings, and backlog um, at, a, at a high level and, um, and then get into how uh, to implement such a solution from a Oracle order management and financial analytics perspective and then how do I get there in terms of an implementation plan. Next slide. So who is KPI? Next slide. Very briefly, we're Oracle's most experienced Oracle BI and EPM implementation partner. As Jeremiah mentioned, uh, particularly in the area of order management and financial analytics, we have uh, tremendous expertise and we were recognized with the 2011 Oracle Titan Award for Oracle BI applications for an order management and supply chain analytics implementation that achieved a $14 million ROI for, the, for the, our customer in the first year. We do both an on-site, offshore, and a blended delivery model. We have quick start packages, and we also offer training through KPI University. As Jeremiah mentioned, many, uh, both myself and um, the co-founders were part of the Oracle BI engineering team for these applications, as well as many of our consultants as well. And this has allowed us to create some exclusive Oracle BI offerings that enhance the Oracle BI product offering from Oracle, specifically in the areas of fixed asset analytics, deep order repair analytics, salesforce.com analytics, and student information analytics. Next slide. We have a total of 180 plus consultants across our US and offshore operations, 115 customers, and over 350 projects. So let's talk about the business value of BBB analysis. Next slide. So before we get into the business value, let's talk about what do we really mean. So let's level set here a little bit in terms of the process flow for bookings, billings, and backlogs. So just uh, you typically have someone, either a salesperson or an order or entry person, entering a new sales order, which gets becomes a booked order. Then as we move down the flow chart, you either fulfill that order from inventory or you create a manufacturing order that creates that product or products that the customer has ordered and then we pick that that product from inventory or from the manufacturing line and then we ship it to the customer and once we've shipped it we can typically invoice it at that point receive cash which is the the blue boxes which is the billings portion and then we post that information to our general ledger for financials. Next slide. So really, um, there's typically in this order to cash process, there's a number of different scenarios that come up. And there's literally probably 50 to 100 scenarios that we see. A lot of those scenarios are, are individual scenarios, meaning where a customer is interested in backlog, uh, they're interested in the billing situation, or they're interested in the booking side of, of things. What we're going to spend a little bit of time today on is not only those dots, as I call them, which is backlog, booking, and, and, and billings, but also how do you connect the dots? 
So we're going to go through three scenarios that we've seen at multiple customers where the ability to connect the dots between these different pieces really adds tremendous business value. So the first scenario is when we look at things from a backlog-driven perspective. And so what we notice is that backlog is higher than normal. And this could be due to two things as we're going through. One is that the bookings could be going up, which is a, which is a good news story. Uh, of course, I need to ensure that my operations can handle the increased orders. But my, if my backlog is trending higher, it could also be due to lack of inventory causing delayed shipments, which I need to do something about. So backlog by itself is not enough to really drive business value. The second scenario, the second part could be backlog is lower than normal. And again, this could be because bookings are going down. So I need to now look at things from a sales perspective. Or it could be a good news story that my manufacturing order fulfillment efficiency is improved, which is what why I can run with a lower backlog and have lower inventory costs. So again, the point here is that you need to at least look at both backlog and bookings to get a real uh, to get a complete picture of things. Next slide. The second scenario is when I look at things from a bookings perspective. So I'm somebody who's looking at sales and saying, okay, net bookings are going down, which could be um, due to lower sales, more cancellations, and so on. So then I need to dig a little bit deeper. What's causing that? For instance, it could be a backlog issue that in this case, I'm actually um, a lack of inventory for a particular product uh, is causing order cancellations or people simply not ordering. Uh, the other issue that we often see on the booking side is the booking margins are going out. And this could be, uh, again, a case of the sales force doing too much discounting, rebates, or promotions, so pure sales issue. But again, it could also be that this is something they're forced to do because I've got a backlog situation where I don't have enough products, so whatever I am selling, customers are demanding a discount because I've got a backlog in the things that they do want, so they're asking for discounts and other things. Next slide. And then the last one that we're going through is one that actually involves all three, billings, bookings, and backlog. So I notice that my billings are going down, and that could be, if we go along the top, could simply be because the backlog is going up and we just can't bill for unshipped orders. Most customers don't like it. If, um, so until I can ship, I can't bill, and that's why my billing is going down. Or billing could be going down because I may have a product life cycle issue where uh, my product is at the end of its life cycle, so customers are expecting discounts, so my overall dollar value of my billing is going down. It could be something that's specific to a customer, one of my key customers, or a geography issue. Uh, billing is going up, which uh, could mean that backlog is going down which means, which is a great situation, which means we can bill for more shipped orders, and that's really driving it. Or, again, I've got a good news story here in terms of uh, I've got a new product that's, that's uh, on the booking side that I'm getting a lot of orders for. Uh, I've got customers that are ordering. So a number of different things that could be happening. So again, until I look at all three things, I don't really get a clear picture of what's happening within my company. Next slide. So, what, as we've spoken to customers, we've seen three major challenges when customers try to achieve this kind of capability. The first thing is they've got multiple ERP modules or multiple ERP systems. So they may have a combination of legacy systems, the business suite, PeopleSoft, SAP, and so on. And so it's difficult to integrate all of that data, even if it's within a single ERP system, and certainly becomes more challenging if you've got multiple ERP systems. Next slide. Sorry, and, and what they end up doing, of course, is multiple Excel spreadsheets. I should have spoken to that. Multiple Excel, Excel spreadsheets, and Excel really becomes the, uh, the integration method. Sure, many of you have the situation where uh, Excel really becomes your ETL tool or extract, transform, and, and load tool. The second challenge is simply the time and cost to build an integrated data warehouse. 
that brings everything together. So it not only needs to integrate all this data, which could be from, again, a single ERP or multiple ERP systems, but bring it all together, deal with things like currency conversion rules, common master data, bring all of that together to ha so that I have order bookings, inventory, backlog, uh, um, invoicing or, or billing information, GL revenue. Bringing it all together is incredibly time consuming and, and costly. Next slide. And then the third challenge we see is that they've done the back end work, but they haven't coupled all of that work on the back end to a world class BI tool. So you don't have things like the ability to drill down from summary to detail, the ability to trend, uh, an easy way in a single place to compare bookings, billings, and backlogs side by side, um, multiple BI uh, solutions uh, for the different parts. And lastly, no ad hoc capability, because I can guarantee you that no matter how good a product Oracle sells or how good an implementation KPI does, the day you go live with your uh, booking, billings, and backlog application, is the day that the users are going to want something new. So you need a robust ad hoc capability that allows you to be nimble and to be able to answer those business questions that come up. Next slide. So how do you meet these challenges? So one way that we've seen customers meet these challenges is to use Oracle Supply Chain and Financial Analytics. And why this is such a great fit for this business problem is that it's a pre-integrated data model that combines bookings, order fulfillment and backlog, and billings and financials in a single data integrated data model and gives you a variety of user interfaces with the OBIE tools. So static reports, dashboards, ad hoc self-service, alerts, all of those capabilities. And it's got pre-built connectors for the Oracle ERP system, such as Oracle eBusiness Suite, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, and can be expanded to, in, to address non-Oracle ERP systems through Oracle's universal adapter. And the project that Jeremiah mentioned, the Titan Award winning project that KPI did, actually had 15 data sources for order management, one of which was Oracle eBusiness Suite, a second one was SAP, and there were 13 other order management systems that were integrated using the Oracle universal adapter to give this customer, a manufacturing company, a single view of their supply chain. Next slide. And so again, we talked about a pre-integrated data model, pre-built connectors for EBS, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, and the universal adapter, and also pre-built metrics and dashboards and best practices that are incorporated into those metrics and dashboards, which we will demonstrate to you later on in this presentation. Next slide. And the third thing is using a world-class reporting tool. And OBIE, as you'll see in the demo, certainly is a world-class reporting tool. It's 100% web-based. You've got full ad hoc capability, a variety of report output styles, and you've also got built-in security uh, with your, the source applications such as EBS, PeopleSoft, and JDE, or build your own security model. Next slide. Thank you.